The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 18th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any. In every ping, will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mixed bag out there in the indices. You've got the uh, Dow up 27 points, basically flat a quarter percent for the S&P or 13 points, two tenths for the Nasdaq, 129 points, two tenths of the downside in the Russell. That's four points. A little over one percent for the semis, 46 points there. Tranny's up 19. Gold is up a half a buck. Silver's down nine pennies. Light sweet crude is up 213. Natural gas up three cents. The 30 year treasury off uh, half a point, printed out, printed out at 123.10. Now, our leader today in the clubhouse, dollar wise, is Super Microcomputer up 17 bucks, followed by Costco, 14 bucks, followed by Netflix is up 13. United States Steel up uh, $10. McKesson Corp up eight. Google, or I should say, Facebook is up eight bucks as well. To the downside, it is Structure Therapeutics down nearly 50%, 48%. 28 bucks and change. BlackRock down 20 bucks or two and a half percent. Asthma Holdings sixteen dollars two percent. Lantheus Holdings off sixteen bucks twenty one percent. Mace Knight International down fifteen bucks about fifteen percent. Move to the downside. So let's begin the day. Where do we want to begin the day? I'll tell you where we'll begin the day. Let's go take a look at those daily equity future contracts. For that, we're going to go ahead and switch panels. We'll go to the white version. In fact, what we'll do is we'll take a look at both the daily and the weekly at the same time. So momentarily, we'll have those white charts up for you on your screen. Here they go. The upper left-hand corner is the, is the ES Mini. So we take a look at it. This formed or confirmed a, TD, a Wave 7 top on Friday, and it did that because uh, we didn't get a higher high. The high from that Thursday candle, December 14th, is 49.71.75. We've been up within, a, within one tick of uh, that we haven't gotten there but if we do tick above 47.91.75 so 47.92 that would be the price point that we get to that'll negate that signal and then what we could have is maybe maybe tuesday through thursday some type of td9 count top form uh, maybe that'll be the uh, Christmas gift out there. That, I don't know. But right now, that's what you're watching. Now, what price should do is pull back to that oscillator and change line. But if it negates that signal, um, then uh, then that uh, that call would be off. If I take a look at the daily time frame, daily time frame shows what? Well, basically shows we are in bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says you could get a TD9 count over the course of the next several weeks. Now, we know that the markets typically top in the first week of uh, January. This is a weekly time frame. So we've got this week and then next Next week, uh, that would then take us into the new year. So this week could be bar number eight. Next week could be bar number nine. So we could be looking at that top real early in the uh, January time frame. At least that's the message from the weekly chart. We look at the daily chart for the NQ. The daily chart for the NQ at the moment.
moment has no topping pattern, with the exception of the fact that today looks like it will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, it'll become bar number eight so long as price closes above, and it should be able to do that, but close above 16,575.50. Tomorrow is going to be the question mark because tomorrow bar number nine must form for this pattern. And that means that tomorrow price would have to close above. 16,777.25. So if that's going to be the daily topping pattern, we're not going to see much of a movement to the downside before that pattern would come into play. We take a look at its weekly time frame. This week will become bar number eight. That says you could see a top between this week and two weeks further out. So that takes us into the beginning of the year. So that lines up with what we looked at on the weekly chart for the ES mini. In the case of the Dow equity future contract, Today will be so. This has a wave seven pattern that looks like it. Well, it hasn't been extended yet. The high from Friday, thirty-seven seven eighty-four. The high today, thirty-seven seven sixty-six. So if we tick above the thirty-seven eight seven thirty-seven seven eighty-four mark today, that wave seven pattern continues over. Uh, you have to have a lower high, just like the Yes Mini from its Friday candle session out there. And uh, but this could also go on and form a TD nine count uh, top. Uh, it's got a number of different things to do before it gets there, but that pattern could come into play between Tuesday and Thursday of this week. In the case of Russell 2000, the only pattern that's in play right now is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, and that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm its top. By the way, in the Dow on its weekly time frame, this week should become bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. Price still needs a tick above last week's high in order for it to be a potential topping bar number eight out there. But this is also signaling that we could see over the course of the next three weeks a weekly TD9 count top. We take a look at that um, weekly chart for the Russell 2000. What we did see take place last week, and this is a bullish sign, was a close above its TD9 count breakdown area. And that was at 1995.90. And as long as price stays above, closes above that this week, that will signal to you and I that we've got a change in trend. It's only in bar number five on a weekly basis, or at least that was the bar that was confirmed last week out there. We will take our P's and Q's from the Russell 2000, although when it is out in front and it's leading the charge along with the NASDAQ 100, that's a very bullish case out there. But we're not really in that uh, making that case at this stage here. Our expectation, our anticipation, at least at this stage of the game, is one to watch these patterns on the daily time frame. We should rally into the end of the year. We should rally into the early part of January out there. But what it coulda, shoulda, if we do get these topping patterns that do form out here, well, maybe that's not the case. But we'll take things one step at a time. But the one step at a time today for December 18th is we should see the market continue to rally. Now, let's go take a look at some of the intraday charts out here. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ since that's leading the charge. Let's take a look at its um, intraday charts out here. Oops, I got, should should really grab the proper screen out there. That would make things much easier. Here's the proper screen. Now, I'm kind of curious. Uh, so on a daily time frame, we've already covered the NQ on the daily time frame. Let's look at the five-hour time frame chart. And on a five-hour time frame chart, what do we have out here? We do not have any kind of a top. We do have price that's below that green oscillator and change line. So in order for on the five hour time frame for the NQ to tell us it's in true out rally mode, we need to see this trade above and close above 16,890. But no topping pattern that I see on the five hour time frame chart. We do have a TD9 count pattern on that four hour chart. We'll take a look at that when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're just kind of going through the uh, intraday charts here for the NQ. This is the four-hour time frame. Four-hour time frame is uh, going to appears that it will form a TD9 count top at uh, this will be a ten, at uh, 2 p.m. today. Uh, it'll do that as long as price closes above. This is at 2 p.m. If price is uh, trading above 16840.25, you'll get a TD9 count top. Now, that top could form on the bar following bar number nine, so that means take us into the evening uh, session out there. But uh, you do have a TD9 count top, but already has a road momentum indicator top. That formed at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, but a close above 16,887.25, and we're above that as we speak right now. That would negate that signal. But we're off to the new signal at TD9 count top on the forward time frame. So we'll want to keep a close eye on that. On a two-hour time frame right now, price uh, looks like it's going to negate a uh, road momentum indicator top. Uh, that was at the high out here of uh, 16,887. And this bar here is going to close at uh, 12 noon, so in about another uh, 50, uh, 40 minutes out there. Uh, that's on the So that's a positive on the four-hour time frame chart. That's bullish positive. Uh, I don't see a topping pattern on the 60-minute chart. Uh, I do see a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the 30-minute, but price is pulled back right now. Let's uh, expand this chart out, take a quick peek at it. So when you get a top out there, and this is one of the reasons to understand the oscillator and change line, because it can act, oftentimes does, especially if it's green and price is above it, that becomes your buy the dip area. That's where the buyers are at, that oscillator and change line. It's one of the areas where they're at. In this case here, price is pulled back, it's tested it. So even though we have a current top on a 30 minute basis, it's very neutral. Neutral because the top pushed price back to really two levels of support, both of those holding. The second level was the top of its profile for the uh, 30 minute time frame at 16,858.50 out there. Um, and the oscillator and change line. So if price closes above the high of this pattern, the high of this pattern was at 1030 this morning, 1690550, that pattern gets negated, and we head on to higher price out there. Now, it could go form a T9 count top as well for the 60-minute time frame, but let's cross, or the 30-minute time frame, let's cross one bridge at a time. I don't see anything else on the intraday charts out here, so really I'd be paying attention, I'd say, here to right now to the 30-minute chart, and the 240-minute uh, chart, if you are an intraday trader 
for the NQ out there. We've got a couple of requests that have come in. Let's go ahead and get to those so I don't get behind. Would love more. Again, 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com by email, and of course, in the den, Andy Ping will do. So the first request coming in this morning from uh, Joe, and Joe wanted to take a look at natural gas. Well, actually, he wants to take a look at UNG and natural gas. But his question was, he's, he's trading natural gas, he's trading UNG, he's trading natural gas by, by a UNG. Don't worry, folks, I, I'll eventually be able to spit it out. Um, and so if I confuse you, my apology. But if we take a look at this daily time frame chart, so the UNG contract, and you want to always go take a look at it, see what's inside it. Now, I did this on Friday. I didn't do this, you know, just a few minutes ago. But I did it on Friday when we were together, and it was just the February contract. But at some point in time here, March is going to start creeping into the work, so you want to pay attention to that. But the question that uh, Joe posed to me is uh, where is the uh, where's resistance? Where is the potential sell point out here? And uh, so the truth of that, even though he's trading UNG, the truth of that answer comes really from the equity future contract. So you don't have to sell that. And I'm going to give you the figure on UNG, but with but I will say that it, it's really just a figure. It's just a wild guess. It's going to have some logistics to it, but the reality is it's going to be the underlying instruments that are going to control when and where uh, one should take some action out here. So in the case of the uh, daily natural gas contract, we know we have a TD9 count bottom. You and I, we've spoken about that. Now, what took place on Friday was a bullish event out there. That bullish event was price was able to close above the top of its daily profile. If it does that again today, and right now it looks like it's got that follow through, that's a positive. And that says on the daily basis, a change in trend. Now, the change in trend then should take us up towards its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And that's price at 281. So the first answer to your question, Joe, is on the February 2024 contract. If price gets up towards that 2814 level, 2.814, that's going to be your first level of resistance. And that could be the place where you would take a look at selling it. But you want to see what other patterns are going on, volume, things of that sort. But again, other patterns that are in play out here. Um, if I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, and this is helpful to you, just try, try to understand uh, natural gas and, and, and just how bullish it is or isn't is the mere fact that what we have out here is we have a TD9 count top. Uh, do we have that top? Uh, no, we do not. You see that high. We do not have a TD9 count top. But we do have a version of a sell the D point. You can see the stair step uh, approach out here. So we would certainly have a sell the D point pattern that formed out here. And it did that at 730 this morning. And price is below the bottom of that bullish structure profile. But the real key level here to be watching, Joe, everybody else out there, is that breakout level at 2.447. Since coming off of the bottom out here, and that was the bottom. Let me make sure this is the, that on the intraday chart. Yeah, that's the bottom. So uh, when we came off of the bottom on a 30-minute base, that's 2 o'clock in the morning, back on December 13th, you had wave number 7 bottom, you had a rose momentum indicator bottom as well. What we haven't seen is price uh, close below a breakout level. So you want to watch that breakout level. That's at the 2.447 area. As long as uh, price remains above that, things look hunky-dory when we take a look at natural gas. Now. What's that equivalent or potentially equivalent inside the UNG? That's a great question. I'm going to give you what I can give you. But again, Joe, focus and pay attention right now to the February contract for natural gas. That's where the answer uh, should come from. But with regard to UNG specifically, and we get that chart up here on our screen, or we're going to try to. Here we go. It has a TD9 count breakdown level as well, and that's at the $5.60 mark. Don't hold me to 560 uh, because, again, it's going to be based upon the instruments uh, that are inside this. I don't know when March March's contract will be added to that, but when it does, you want to pay attention to that as well. So it's around $5.60, but, Joe, as you know, pay attention to the natural gas contract or contracts, and that will assist you with that trade. LB writes in, and LB wants to take a look at URA. That is a uranium ETF out there, and his question is, should he sell at 30? So I'd like you to study these charts for me, and I'd love you to be able to help me answer that question for him. But here's what we know. And what we know is I'm going to start from the right and go back to the left. So I'm going to start with the longer term chart. Sorry about that, folks. I had to take a swig of water and a small little ice cube slid in there. And then so what do you do when you get a small little ice cube that slides in there? You're on the air right now. And if I chew on that, which I prefer to do, you're going to hear me chewing on ice. 
that's probably not really a great sound, I'm thinking, coming through the uh, headsets out there. So I did was I just let it melt, and that's why we had that pause. Not that you needed all that information. Probably TMI out there, but what am I going to do? We're going to take a look at the monthly chart. That's what Stevie's going to do. And to help answer LB's question, here's what we know. The monthly chart, price is up at resistance. That's the top of its profile. That's at 3016. If we take a look at the weekly chart, where's resistance? Well, we don't have any resistance that we can see on the weekly time frame chart unless I really open it up. But what we do see on the weekly chart is that bar number eight is likely to form uh, this week in uranium. We know that on a TD9 count pattern, if we get a TD9 count uh, successful bar number eight, 90% of the time, we get a TD9 count. Now at the same time that on the weekly chart, you're getting into that potential TD9 count, you're moving into a swing point out here. That's the week of November 12th, that identified a Rose Mintum indicator top. Now, there were 12 million shares, 12.9 million shares traded then. We come back from this break. Let's figure out what we did last week out there and what LB Lee should be looking at. We'll be right back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, we're taking a look at the charts here for URA. That's the ETF, I believe, for uranium. And uh, the question is, uh, this is by uh, a listener, uh, should he sell out at the $30 mark? Which, by the way, that's what uh, price got up to today. It uh, The high so far has been $30.28. So we're trying to answer that question. So we took a look at the monthly chart. We knew that price was trading right up in resistance. 30.16 was the top of its profile. Resistance is resistance until it fails. When we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we had discussed the fact that we're likely going to get a bar number eight of a TD9 count, and that can be a top. You still need a bar number nine to uh, complete, so that's not until the end of next week out there. Uh, what we also know is that price on a weekly basis is trading into a prior roads meant to prior rose momentum indicator swing point top and that swing point is from the trading session of november the 12th there was 12.9 million shares that traded hands that week last week as we closed inside that swing point it was with 11.9 million shares uh the uh we also closed inside that the week of November 24th. That was with 6.7 million shares. So you are moving into it with volume. This week is too early to call. We're 1.3 already, so I don't know how that's really going to equate come the end. But the question was also, what's the additional upside potential? When you do close inside a swing point, and especially if it's with volume, I would say it's similar volume at this stage here. Odds favor, you go tag that high. Do you risk it? Uh, you know, that's at 31.60. It's trading right now. It looks like at 29.58. That's a call you have to make. And it's not that price can't bust through that, but you're up at resistance here on the weekly. You're up at resistance on the monthly chart. Let's look at the daily chart. And the daily chart on Friday generated a road's momentum indicator top. Did that with regard to uh, as a result of producing a bearish engulfing candle. Now, if price were to close above that high, and that high is the high of the bearish engulfing pattern, well, it turns out that was the prior bar, the one on a, from December 14th, and that high was at 29.86. If price were to close above 29.86 today, uh, Lee, that would negate that signal, and if it negates that signal then that's uh, on top of what we looked at on the weekly chart. Might give you the uh, the uh, the uh, information you want to go ahead and continue to stay with this trade out there. But you do have a top at 20 until 29.86 is uh, it's been tested, but until it fails, the daily time frame has a top. Now price is above the oscillator and change line. It's above that green. It's above the green oscillator and change line, uh, which is printing right now at about the 29.52 level where 29.55 is the actual last trade that fired off. But you're also above the top of its profile at 29.03. If price were to close below the top of its profile at 29.03, uh, Lee, that's where things could start to get a little dicey to the downside. Uh, and at least that would then suggest a test of support. And the support would be in really two different areas. The first, where, the first level would be between 27.34 and 27.58, and the second level would be at 26.15. So based upon looking at what we're looking at with regard to uranium, what additional information can we provide Lee? Well, I think we can take a look at its dance moves out here. And its dance steps, we can see that all of the retracements, all of the retracements have been, uh, and I'm going to move past the uh, December, uh, October 4th retracement out there, but all of the retracements have been two bar, with one exception, knee-jerk reactions. So it lasts, although Friday's was just a one bar. That's a bullish signal out there. Now, I don't know how the day is going to end out here, Lee. But so far, you're seeing bullish moves on its pullbacks, but you are dealing with resistance. The reason I've elaborated on this, really, on this one specifically, is Lee's been in this trade for a long time. And so I don't know what a long time means, but he did say for a long time. So I believe that means for a long time out there. Um, so that's where I'm at. Should you sell at 30? I don't really have all the information that you have in order to make that decision. But I do hope that the information I provided to you help you to make that decision. So best of luck to you. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Our next request coming in from uh, ABCD inside the Tiger's Den. And he wants to take a look at BMO. So let's get the BMO charts up, see what they're signaling to you and I. We take a look at the daily time frame. You've got BMO trading at about 93.62. My chart show 93.30. Right now, I mean, I got to figure out what's going on with this uh, data feed issue here. 
it's frustrating. But I've got two sets of screens going here, at least two sets of screens, so I can figure that out. So first, what do we see here, Dano? What I see is a wave number seven top. That's it. Uh, on the daily time frame that needs a lower high in order to confirm that pattern if we do get that confirmed pattern what price should do is pull back to its oscillator and change line that's currently printed about 89.17 now i see a gigantic a to b equals cd to the upside this c to d leg you know it's way beyond it's one to 2.72 maybe one to one point well let me see what it looks like on my other chart here it looks like it's at about the, at least the two level the one to two level out there but uh, stevie will just simply confirm that out there for you, easier for me to just put it in on my other chart. And right now we are at the uh, the A to B equals CD pattern. We are a, we are above the 1.6 rate. The 2.0 level is at 94.84. So I'd say price is going to go target the 94.84 level unless we were to get a bearish reversal candle. So the only top, so we have two potential topping signals. We have wave number seven that needs a lower high. We have an A to B equals CD pattern. I'd be more comfortable with that pattern identifying the top than I would on wave number seven, knowing that we've got an A to B equals CD. What else do we know? We haven't seen the low of a prior bar close below. Close below the low of a prior bar since uh, November the 29th out there. That's strong. That's very strong. And that's the same case as we speak uh, today. So my thoughts are, Dano, this looks pretty bullish when I take a look at the daily. On the weekly chart, it also looks bullish. Now, it is dealing with potential resistance. That's a prior swing point. That prior swing point takes us to the week of July 28th. There was 7.5 million shares. Last week, you came into it. You closed inside that swing point, and you did with 4 million shares. So you are moving into that level with lighter volume. So you could run into some resistance here, Dan. Being your pilot at this stage of the game, I'm going to put that fastened seatbelt sign on, knowing that we are moving into a swing point high at 94.46 on light volume. The monthly chart says, geez, nice commentary, Steve-O, but I'm thinking I'm headed up to 96.57. And I would say the monthly chart, well, why are you thinking that? And the monthly chart would say because I'm in a bullish structured monthly profile and prices above that green oscillator and change line. And then we should head up to the top of that profile. And that's at 96.57. So, Dano, everything here looks pretty good other than what I've uh, provided to you. 94.15 is the next uh, TD9 count breakdown level. The daily time frame swing point takes us to the trading session of July 24th. And that had volume of 872,000 shares. So far this morning, you're at 189, 200,000 shares in two hours of time. So that's going to get us to about 600,000 shares. So it looks like you're even moving into that swing point on the daily time frame with lighter volume. So I hope that helps you out. Yeah, that's that storm that really created havoc down here. It was one heck of a weekend. And then yesterday, the skies opened up. And it was just one of the most beautiful weather for the Miami Dolphins football game that I've experienced in a long, long, long time. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take a look at our next request out here that's coming in from Duncan Steve. He wants to take a look at Amazon. And the question specifically is, do we see any kind of toppiness out here? When we take a look at the daily time frame chart, let's open up the daily time frame chart, see what kind of patterns we've got. We've got nothing, Silch. We've got only bullish patterns when we take a look at Amazon. And what I mean by that is there's not an A to B equals CD pattern. There's not a prior swing point that we're going against where it looks like new all-time highs out here on Amazon. We are above profile resistance. That was at 148.29. We are above its green oscillator and change on 150.25. This is what Stevie would term as a bullish breakout. This would be the most bullish A, a chart pattern that you could find out here. So I've got no topping signal whatsoever. We are in wave number six, that's letter F. So perhaps we could get a wave seven top. But as we speak right now today on uh, December the 18th, the daily time frame chart for Amazon, Duncan Steve is muy bueno. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, it looks like on the weekly time frame chart, you're going to confirm, not you, but it is going to confirm a TD9 count top this week. Now, what we know is that price can form that top on the bar following bar number nine. So it makes sense to me, right now you're trading above its green oscillator and change line. You closed above the top of its weekly profile last week. You're still trading above that. We're trading above last week's high. It's just simply bullish. So it is the weekly chart is saying, okay, pay attention out here. Maybe a tie in wave seven with a TD9 count on the weekly time frame and on the monthly time frame. At the end of the month, you complete a TD nine count top. So all of this is suggesting, and your question was, was there any toppiness? We took a look at the daily time frame chart, and we said, well, not really, not at least just yet. It's in bullish breakout mode. It's in bullish breakout mode, quite frankly, on the weekly chart and on the monthly time frame chart. So if we pulled up Stevie's market analyzer, that's what would be showing for those three time frames out there. But we would also know that we've got TD nine count patterns, one that's going to complete on the monthly, one that's going to confirm this week and then complete next week out there so we could easily be looking at a top uh duncan as we come into the end of the year beginning of next year out there uh, so that's what i see when i take a look at amazon if we take a look at consecutive moves to the upside to the downside out here we'll see that all of the retracements coming off of the uh, bottom out here in october we've seen one two 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 bar retracements knee jerk reaction lows and we saw one three bar low out here uh, that took place back on November the 30th. So things are very bullish out there. This is only going to be day number two to the upside. That says we could see the market pull back tomorrow or something like that. Typically, you get the Texas two-step out there that uh, Amazon is uh, dancing to. So that, that's again, that still looks pretty good to Stevie. Uh, we take a look at those chart patterns. Now, on a 30-minute basis out here, on a 30-minute time frame, 
uh, you do have a TD nine count signal. So this will be helpful to you, Duncan, with regard to the rest of the day. And the rest of the day says if you close above that high, the high of the day, which is at 153.30, and you do that on a 30-minute bar, price should continue to rally forward because this is a TD nine count top. If you negate that signal, then uh, boom, up to the upside you should go. Now price is trading above. Where's the top of that profile? 151.17. It's trading above everything. Red, green, oscillator. so it's neutral signal right now on the 30-minute base. But watch that high. That's where you get the uh, cue with regard to what Amazon's likely to continue doing throughout the uh, day out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Amazon. Basically, in summary, folks, it says just be careful uh, as we come into the end of the year out there. Pat Stone writes in. Uh, so, oops, sorry, I don't usually give last names. Pat S. writes in. Sorry about that, Pat. And is asking the question about Apogee and Perigee. We had a beautiful moon last night. I hope uh, those of you uh, see it was the first time we actually saw the sky here for a couple of days. And uh, I'm going to get over to the black background charts out there. But if you were able to see the moon, boy, it was beautiful. A nice little crescent moon right at uh, Perigee. Perigee means that's when the moon during its current lunar cycle is closest to Earth out there. So let's go take a look at those Perigee charts out there, Perigee and the Apogee charts. Stevie's just got to find them. The question was and is, is the following. Uh, if Apogee or Perigee happen over the weekend or on a holiday when a uh, market is not trading, what do you do? And that is a great question. And so what I do is I use both the close of the Friday session or if it's a holiday, whatever that earlier session was. And I use the open of the Sunday night session, in this case here. So now you're asking about individual stocks. And I will just share with you, I have not done any work on individual stocks to know how Apogee and Perigee respond. All my initial work was done on the ES Mini. Then uh, uh, Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den, he took that a step forward and started applying it to pretty much all futures contracts out there. John, I'll just ask you that question in case you're listening in. Have you done that at all in individual stocks? Uh, but uh, with regard to the futures markets out there, Pat, that's what I do. Now, when I put together uh, last evening's charts, out there yeah i just have marked as we speak right now just the sunday close the sunday at uh, the sunday close the friday close when we take a look at the es mini for the equity future contract was 47.69.50 the open uh last night was at uh, 47.73.50 so you would use both of those levels because they were close enough sort of close enough right now i've just left the uh, sunday i'm sorry the friday evening close out there. That's both for the ES Mini, which is trained above perigee. So from a short-term standpoint, that's bullish. The NQ doing the same. Again, I've chosen the uh, close from Friday. That's at 16.815. I uh, know John uh, Z in the Tiger said also has not done it on individual equities, Pat. So you'd be doing work on your own there if you're using it to uh, apply, try to apply to individual equities. If, if you do that or somebody does do that, you know, I'd love to know if you get any kind of uh, results out there, good, bad, or indifferent. But in case of a uh, gold the level that i'm using out there is 203380 now in the case of gold the this this you know the 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 actual open uh, from last night came in at uh, 2033 uh, oh sorry, uh, 203330 and 203380 you know with regard so we're really right inside that uh, range out there silver uh, the perigee uh, uh, lunar phase uh, pivot point is at 24.15. With regard to light sweet crude, it's at 72.10. And with regard to the U.S. dollar index, it's up at the 102.21 level. And that, uh, that perigee lunar phase really looks like it is uh, working at this stage of the uh, game. So, Pat, I hope that answers your question out there with regard to uh, apogee and perigee. Um, and, folks, I tested. Uh, what I did was I downloaded and download. I paid. Uh, for the individual that wrote the New American Ephemeris, Piquet, I think is his last name out there. This was many years ago to uh, uh, give me a digitized version of that. And that gave me all of the lunar aspects, all of the celestial aspects um, so that I could go out there and track. So whether it was something in retrograde or, you know, any kind of grade out there, um, I was able to go apply. And that's what I did. I wrote, I, had, I didn't write the program, but I paid somebody to write the program for me. It took every every instance that I could identify that seemed to have an M impact on the markets and went ahead and applied them. And I couldn't find anything that was consistent. The one thing I found that was consistent for reasons I have no clue about, I have, a, I, I have an idea, uh, was uh, apogee and perigee. And it was by sort of accident 
because I was really working on the celestial planets and their alignment and so forth. And then finally I said, well, shoot, I, I have the data. Why don't I just throw in apogee and perigee and see what happens? And lo and behold, well, I'm telling you folks, it's a, it's a great tool. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back to close out the show. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to end the show by taking a look at the WEAT ETF. This is for Rose inside the Tiger's Den out there. Now, WEAT, the ETF, this is really important. Again, it's understanding uh, what the underlying instruments are. Uh, it's not the active contract, which I believe is March of 2024. Instead, the three future contracts that make up WET is the May 2024 contract. May, am I not on the right screen? I am. Uh, thank you, Al. I heard that. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's my wingman out there, Mr. Alberto. Thank you very much. Now we've got those four contracts up. And so May is the, it represents about 35% of WEAT. December of 2024 represents about 35%, and July of 2024 is 30%. Now, the May contract of 2024 has got the best bottoming pattern. It's got that Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And uh, right now, price has uh, been able to close above the top of its daily profile. That's something that we weren't able to see we do for quite some time, which is close above the top of a daily profile. You can see that was really the case all the way since July 22nd. This is like take a look at a daily time frame chart. So just that move alone that was on the trading day of December 4th is a real positive. I think it's real positive. In fact, it begs a question. Was the low here from December 13th? And I can't answer that, but it does beg the question. Uh, is that uh, if the uh, low of uh, December 13th was the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside? My inclination is it really may have been, uh, but there's up there's resistance at 653.23 out there. Uh, that's when we take a look at the May 2024 contract. With regard to bobbing patterns on the other time frames, uh, that would be the July or December contracts. I don't really have them, but they are also trading above their green oscillator and change line, and they are inside their profiles out there. So I would stay with wheat. I would stay with WEAT. The Rose, these are the contracts that you need to, uh, and the reason why I would stay with it, here's your Rose Mintum indicator bottom for the continuous contract for wheat. Those are big, important bottoming signals. Folks, have a terrific Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.